Well, hello grade seven and welcome to your first online math video. Uh, I want you to take note, we've currently skipped chapter six. I took a look at chapter six and I decided it just wasn't the greatest one to teach online. So hopefully we'll be back in two weeks and then we can just do chapter six together. So make sure you go to chapter seven where we're gonna learn about ratios. All right, so the first question we need to answer is, what is a ratio? Well, a ratio is just simply when we compare two quantities. So two different things and we compare them together. So if you take a look here, I have a picture of some marbles. There are five marbles and what I can do with a ratio is I can compare blue to red and then also red to blue. So if I were to compare blue to red, I would say I have two blue marbles, two, three red marbles. That's one way to write a ratio. Another way to write a ratio is like this, two colon three. And then the final way to write a ratio is one that you should be very familiar with, because I think you already started learning about it back in grade one or two, is this way. And if we were all in class, I would have you shout out, what is that? And you would say to me, it's a fraction. So those are my three ways to compare ratios or to write down ratios. So if I wanted to do the same thing over here with red to blue, notice that the order changes. Three to two, three to two, and then three over two. So those are my three ways of writing ratios. Now, if I wanted to, let me just erase this to give myself a little bit more room. I could also compare, if I wanted to, blue to the total. So blue to total, I have two blue marbles. How many in total? Two to five. Two to five. And then as a fraction, two out of five. So these are the three ways that you're going to be seeing fractions or ratios in our textbook. Not fractions. So a fraction is an example of a ratio. These are the three ways you're going to see ratios in our textbook. So let's take a look at this ratio. You can see that I drew the most beautiful marbles you've ever seen in the world for us to work with ratios. And I'm going to compare the ratio of red to green. So again, I can write it however I want. I can write 4 to 6. I can write 4 to 6. But lots of times I'm going to choose to write as a fraction of 4 to 6. Now let's say I want to simplify that ratio. Because I'm working with it in fraction form, really all I need to be able to remember how to do is how to simplify a fraction. And when I want to simplify a fraction, I want to divide it by the greatest common factor. So basically, the biggest number that my numerator and my denominator can be divided by. So in this case, 4 and 6 can both be divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And what you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. If it helps you, you can write and remember those little arrows to show that we're going to do the same thing to the top and the bottom because we want to keep our fractions equivalent. So now I've simplified a ratio. So I can say things like for every two red marbles, I would have three green marbles. For every four red marbles, I would have six green marbles. Those are my ratios. That's how I compare them. And generally I want my ratios to be in simplest form. So let's do that again, taking a look at a few more marbles. <clears throat> so if we look at the marbles here, we should be able to fill in a sentence. Okay. For every blank blue dots, there are how many green dots? So if I look at what I have for every three blue dots, there are six green dots. So if I want, I can write that again as a fraction. And if I want, I can simplify that fraction. Again, I can think what's the biggest number they can both be divided by where I'm fair and doing it the same to the bottom and the top. But really grade seven with three sixths, you should be able to look at that and go, oh, that's one half. So I could rewrite this sentence if I wanted to. And I could say for every one blue dot, there are two green dots. That's in simplest form. Now, let's ask ourselves the question, 
what if there are 10 blue dots? So remember, this is my ratio, right? One blue to two green. But now I want to know what happens if there are 10 blue dots. Well, I can do the same thing that I usually do with equivalent fractions. What did I do to the 1 to get to the 10? Well, I times it by 10. And what I do to the top, I must do to the bottom. So I'm going to be fair and do it to both sides. And I would get 20. So for every one blue dot, remember up here, there are two green dots. So that means if I have 10 blue dots, I have 20 green dots. So I'm simplifying ratios, but then I can also use that simplified ratio to solve another ratio of what if there are 10 blue dots. Now, let's think about when we could talk about ratios kind of in real life. So I've been obviously at home for a long time, self-isolating after um, testing positive for COVID. And then today I spent a lot of time in my dining room looking out the window. And what I noticed is that there are a ton of squirrels in my neighborhood. So let's say I did some research. I didn't actually because I couldn't leave my house. But perhaps I did some research and I found out that there is one squirrel for every four yards in my neighborhood. Let's say, I just, let's say I discovered that ratio. So for every four yards, there's one squirrel that lives there or that is in that area. So now what I can do with that information is I can do a bunch of different things. What if I counted one, two, three, four squirrels in my neighborhood? If there are four squirrels in my neighborhood, I should be able to figure out how many yards there are if this ratio is true. So again, I say to myself, what did I do from the one to get to a four? Well, I times by four. And what you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So I would also multiply by four on the bottom. So now I would get, if there's four squirrels in my neighborhood, there must be around 16 yards. Now, obviously I should could spend some extensive time studying squirrels, but that was just one example I wanted to give you of how ratios can work uh, when calculating things. Another time that we often use ratios is when we are baking. Sometimes you might have a recipe and it might say things to you like the sugar to flour ratio is one to two. So one, oops, let me get off my highlighter there. So my sugar to flour ratio is one to two. So this would be the sugar and this would be the flour. What that means is for every one cup of sugar I put in my recipe, I would need to put in two cups of flour. That's the ratio. So when you're baking, maybe you baked for the Christmas holidays because you wanted to hand out baking trays and maybe your mom said, you need to double that recipe. So now you've doubled your sugar. You're gonna put in two cups of flour. How did I go from one to two? Multiplied by two. So if you doubled your sugar, you must also double your flour to keep the ratio the same. Now notice grade seven, I'm not saying you're keeping the amount of sugar the same, right? Because we went from one to two. I'm saying you're keeping the ratio the same. And that means the relationship between sugar and flour and how they're connected. One way to say how this is connected is the flour is always double the sugar. So maybe you, mom actually said, can you triple the recipe? Then you would have three cups of sugar and six cups of flour. So you put in more sugar and more flour, but the ratio is still considered to be equivalent. All right, next part of our lesson is talking about what if you're given equivalent or given two ratios and you want to know, are they equivalent? So let's say here we're talking about a couple different classes in the school. So let's say we have a grade seven class. There are 20 boys and five girls in the class. And then perhaps there's maybe another school down the road and their classes are quite larger and they have 40 boys and 10 girls in the class. And we want to figure out if that's an equivalent ratio. Do they have the same rate of boys to girls in the class? So the first method we can do to solve that question is to simplify our fractions. So remember when we simplify, we want to divide by the greatest common factor. So I'm just going to rewrite this to simplify here. So I have the fraction of 20 to 5. So I think to myself, well, what number 
can 20 and 5 both be divided by? Well, they can both be divided by the number 5. So, 5 divided by 5 is 1. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. And then 20 divided by 5 is also 1. So I have the ratio of 4 males to 1 female. So that shows me for every 4 boys that are in the class, there's 1 female. Now remember over here, this is a different school. It has a bigger class because we can look at and already see, look at, there's about 50 kids in the class. But we want to know if the ratio is the same, the relationship or the connection between how many boys and how many girls there are. So I have 40 and I have 10. I want to simplify. I divide by the greatest common factor. What's the biggest number that both of those numbers can be divided by? And in this case, it would be 10. I go, uh, 10 divided by 10 is 1. There's a little dot there. And then 40 divided by 10 is 4. So what you should notice is that my ratio is the same. So again, I'm not saying we have the same amount of students, but I'm saying the connection between how many males and how many females there are are the same. So that's one way to check. So we could say here, these are right here, equivalent ratios, or another way to think of it is they are equivalent fractions. All right, there's a, so let's simplify again. Let's check on this one. So again, we have 30 over five. I'm gonna divide by the greatest common factor, which in this case would be five. And I get up here, the ratio is six to one. This one, I can divide both of them by four. Notice I have one on the bottom, so that's handy for comparison. And then 36 divided by 4 is 9. So what I want you to notice is that these are not equal because we don't have the same fractions when we've simplified. 6 over 1 is not the same as 9 over 1. So in this case, you would say they're not equivalent ratios. Now, there's one more way that you can figure out if something is an equivalent ratio. And that's using something called a cross product. And the key word in that is cross. Actually, I guess both are keywords. So cross should make you think I'm going across and product should make you think I'm multiplying. So let's say you get to come across a question like this in your textbook. We have the ratio of 10 over two and then eight over three. And they want you to fill in this bubble. This is where you fill in uh, either it's equal or it's not equal. So you're trying to decide, are these two ratios equal? Or another way is, are they equivalent fractions? Now, one way we can do that is, like I said, with cross products. Let me get a different color just so you can maybe see a bit better. So what I do with cross products is I multiply the numbers that are across from each other. So the numerator from one and the denominator from the other. So I would do 10 times three which gives me 30. And then again, across, and I multiply, two times eight, which gives me 16. Because these numbers are, do not equal each other, 30 and 16, I would say that these are not equivalent. They're not equivalent ratios. Now let's take a look at the second one over here. So again, we're gonna go across eight times four, is 32 and then across again 2 times 16 is 32. So because 32 equals 32 I can fill in this bubble up here and say these are equivalent ratios. Now if I wanted to again grade 7 I could simplify right I could think oopsies let me get off my highlighter there I could think to myself, well, eight over two, I can simplify that to four over one, and then 16 over four also simplifies to four over one. So whichever way you choose to do it, both ways, the way where you simplify, right here, or where you find that the cross products are equal, both of those show you that these are equivalent ratios. Now, I thought I'd show you just one more thing. So thinking back to our marble question, 
right? I can write here what my ratio is. My ratio of green to blue is six to three. Or if I wanted, I could write it as six to three, or I could simplify it and write it as two over one. Remember, that's the ratio of green to blue. So here's my ratio, two over one. Now, what happens if I say, hmm, what would happen if I were to have, uh, let's say, 10 green ones, and I want to solve for how many blue ones I have? Now, I know most of you, again, can just fill it in, but I just want to point this out to you just for fun because I love algebra so much. If we wanted to, we could make this an algebraic problem. Now, most of you are probably groaning and going, I don't want to, but I'm going to show you anyways. So, I put in the letter B for the number that I don't know. Now, remember, we just learned about cross products. So, look it. I can go like this. 2B... Let me write that over here. 2b equals what? It equals 1 times 10. Which means that 2b actually equals 10. Now, think back to December, back when we were in school weeks and weeks ago. How do I get b by itself? I divide by 2. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. These cancel out and look. I get B equals 5. So I could fill in over here that B equals 5. Now again, you're probably saying, oh, Miss Nayav, I could have just thought to myself, well, 2 times what is 10, 2 times 5, and then do it down here. You could have. I just want to show you and keep reminding you how algebra applies. So again, this grade 7, not part of today's like lesson of what you actually need to do in your textbook, but I just wanted to show you how algebra can help in these situations. All right, so that's everything for today's lesson. You're gonna have to do questions one through 15. Please don't hesitate to chat with me. If you get stuck, you can video call, you can just call, or you can either just type in the chats. So ask me for help if you get stuck because every day, almost every day in math, the next day we're gonna have a tiny little quiz um, on the previous day's lesson. So tomorrow on Wednesday, you're gonna have a two to three question quiz to show me you know how to find ratios. So chat with me if you get stuck so that I can help you. I hope you have a great first day of at-home learning. Let's see if I know how to turn off my camera.